Today marks 35 years since the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103, which killed 270 innocent people. My thoughts and prayers, and I'm sure those of the whole chamber, are with their families, friends, and those in the Lockerbie community itself who fell victim to this senseless act of terror. Can I ask the First Minister that in this week of the SNP's budget, which has led to everyone in Scotland who earns more than £28,850 paying more tax than workers south of the border, in total 1.5 million Scots paying more than people doing the exact same job elsewhere in the UK, does Hamza Youssef think it's fair that a majority of Scots will pay more tax than people south of the border who earn the same wage? First Minister. Prime Officer, can I uh, also add my thoughts and indeed my prayers to all of those who continue to feel the impact of the tragic, terrible terrorist attack uh, in, in Lockerbie uh, on the 21st of December uh, 1988. Uh, this uh, year, of course, marks the 35th anniversary of that attack. I spoke to David Mundell actually just this week, and both of us were reflecting on the incredible courage that we saw uh, from not just emergency services, but indeed from the local communities. Uh, many of them, who their stories are not known, who are not named, uh, but through their courageous action, um, ensure that there's an enduring uh, bond uh, between families uh, that were impacted both here in Scotland and indeed those in the United States and across the world that were impacted. My thoughts continue to be uh, with all of those who feel that uh, loss. Uh, let me say, in relation to the issues around uh, the budget, uh, first and foremost, let's make it absolutely abundantly clear that the majority of those in Scotland will pay less tax compared to those in the rest of the United Kingdom. No ifs, no buts, no maybes about it. And this budget, at its very heart, is about values. The Conservative Party, in their autumn statement, chose to, give, to give those uh, like Douglas Ross on higher salaries a tax cut of £754. In contrast, we are asking the top 5% of highest earners, like Douglas Ross, to pay a little more in tax. And by doing so, we are able to give our NHS over £500 million of an uplift, a real terms increase to our NHS, where, of course, the Conservative Party have cut funding for NHS in England. So, yes, we will prioritise an uplift to the NHS. We will prioritise an uplift to education. We will prioritise an uplift First to police and to fire. And, of course, it is the Conservatives who have prioritised a tax cut to the wealthiest, like Douglas Ross. Those are not values that I believe in. They are not the values Thank that you, I believe Scotland believes in either. Douglas Ross. <clears throat> Of course, at its heart, this was a budget from the SNP which was about Scots paying more and getting less. That's what's going to happen uh, as a result of this budget. And these SNP tax hikes on Scottish workers will damage our economy and risk forcing highly skilled, valuable workers out of Scotland. Ian Kennedy, well, the First Minister is saying not true. He's repeating it. He's saying not true. So let's read to the First Minister what Ian Kennedy, the chairman of the British Medical Association Scotland, said. His quote is, one of the unintended consequences of this measure may push more of these doctors out of the NHS to jobs elsewhere or retirement or force them to cut overtime. We could lose those nurses, doctors and specialist NHS staff for good. Does Hamza Youssef accept his tax rises could force key workers out of Scotland's NHS? First Minister. Presiding officer, it is awfully brave, and that is one word for it, for Douglas Ross to talk about the NHS in the week that there's junior doctor strikes happening in NHS England, but not happening in the NHS in Scotland. Not only that, of course. We've made sure through the choices we've made in this budget, there's a real terms increase to NHS spending in Scotland, and there's a real terms cut to the NHS in England because of the choices the Conservatives have made. 
And Douglas Ross, every time we ensure that we have progressive taxation in Scotland, he stands up and suggests that there will be some kind of mass exodus from Scotland. Well, the statistics simply don't bear that out. The national records of Scotland, statistics from 2021, show that 56,000 people came to Scotland from the rest of the UK, UK a net in-migration of almost 10 thousand people. And why are they coming here, presiding uh, officer? They're coming here because when they are here in Scotland, they get free university education. They're coming here because if they get, they get free childcare, free school meals, because they get free nursing and personal care. Those are the choices that we are making. And you know what else they get? We have the best paid nurses here in Scotland anywhere else compared to anywhere else in the UK. No, Thank wonder, you, First no wonder we haven't lost a single day to strike action in the NHS here in Scotland, Thank presiding you. officer. Douglas Ross. I was simply quoting the chairman of the BME in Scotland and we get a rant from the First Minister. <laughs> let's, be, let's be very clear. The UK Government is providing the highest ever level of funding to the Scottish Government. Now, tight budgets are purely the SNP's fault for wasting taxpayers' money. Well, they laugh. It would be funny if it wasn't so serious. The wastage from this SNP government Members, on let's hear Mr. That don't Ross. Float, on doomed court cases, on Ivy League degrees for water executives before we even start on the bar bill. And as a consequence of SNP decisions, shops, pubs and hotels here in Scotland won't get the same rates relief as businesses in England and Wales. The Deputy First Minister is trying to shout down my question um, Mr. about Ross, hospitality. Mr Ross, I would be very grateful if all members could resist the temptation to contribute while they have not been called to speak. And I would say too that I think um, front benches have a particular um, responsibility to lead by example. But of course each and every member of the Parliament has a role to play in that good behaviour. Mr Ross. Yeah. I've got to say that the smug smirk from Michael Matheson and others on the front bench is really disappointing because what I'm, what I'm speaking about is as a consequence of SNP decisions this week, shops, pubs and hotels here in Scotland won't get the same rates relief as businesses in England and Wales. This is what the Scottish Hospitality Group said. Many Scottish hospitality businesses will struggle to survive and customers will see prices increase because of this. And the Scottish Grocers Federation said this. It beggars belief that the Scottish Government has once again failed to pass on the 75% relief for retail seen elsewhere in the UK. So First Minister, why are the SNP putting Scottish businesses at a disadvantage? First Minister. And this is why, presiding officer, Douglas Ross has no credibility when it comes to economic matters whatsoever. Not only did he demand, of course, that we previously, that we previously imitate and copy Tory tax cuts, which would have meant we'd have £1.5 billion less to spend on vital public services. He demands we spend every single penny of UK government consequentials on business relief and tax cuts. If we had done that, we would have seen real terms cuts to the NHS, real term cuts to education, real term cuts to the police service, real term cuts to the fire service. We simply won't choose to do that. And if we had spent the paltry 10.8 million pounds that the UK government in their autumn statement gave to health consequentials, that would have funded five hours of NHS Scotland activity. We make different choices here in Scotland, presiding officer. Why? Because our policies mean that, yes, while we ask the top 5% to pay a little more in tax, they get more for it. And what we simply won't do is copy Tory tax cuts for the wealthy at the expense of our public services. Douglas Ross. Uh, last week, 
we heard a, a bold claim from an SNP Cabinet Secretary that world leaders were <laughs> lining up to get advice uh, from this SNP Government. Now, it, it got me wondering, who, who is this that's been calling for the advice? Has Justin Trudeau been on the phone looking for a camper van? Maybe it's uh, Emmanuel Macron calling the Health Secretary to hear how to stream the Celtic match uh, from Morocco. Maybe, maybe it's Joe Biden asking for advice how to Members. deal with a disastrous predecessor at the heart of a criminal investigation. I, I don't know. It could have been any of those things. Of course, it would not have been asking the Nats how to build ferries or how to run an education system. And they definitely won't have been asking Hamza Youssef for economic advice, because he's making hard-working Scots pick up the bill for his mistakes. He's putting Scottish businesses at a competitive disadvantage. He's driving key NHS staff away, and his decisions mean 1.5 million Scots will pay more than people south of the border. Really, First Minister, is this all Scotland can expect from high-tax Hamza? Yeah. Mr Ross, I, Mr Ross, it, no, First Minister, sorry, it is very important that members address one another courteously, and that is using first names and surnames and avoiding other such names. First Minister. You see, this is the difference between us, presiding officer, that Douglas Ross is standing here advocating for himself as one of the 5% top highest earners in the country to get £754 extra in a tax cut from his Conservative colleagues. The difference is that I'm advocating to make sure that we get a real terms increase to our NHS. That's the difference between us, Presiding Officer. I believe in an increase to our NHS, an increase to our education budget, an increase to police officers, an increase to fire service as well. And what do you get for our progressive taxation system here in Scotland? You get, of course, the best paid NHS staff here Mr. anywhere Ross. in the UK. You get the baby box. You get free prescriptions. You, of course, get free nursing and personal care. You get child care, uh, the most generous offer of child care anywhere in the UK. And under the Tories, you get a Brexit we didn't vote for. You get a mini budget that tanked the economy. You get a Westminster cost of living crisis that's harming millions of households across Scotland. No wonder, presiding officer, the Tories haven't won an election in Scotland in over 70 years, in almost 70 years. And under Douglas Ross's leadership, that ain't changing anytime soon, presiding officer. Question number two.